Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a video all about my January 2018 beauty favorites. Pretty self-explanatory, probably could have told by the title, so let's go ahead and dive in. <laughs> So skincare was really big for me in January. I don't know what it was about December or the holidays could have been, you know, or I guess our eating and drinking habits are kind of out of whack because of the holidays or if it was hormones. I don't know, my skin was a mess. I was breaking out like crazy, not just along, along my jaw, because I would have thought it would have been totally hormonal if that was the case, but also along my hairline, um, on my chest, and like the top of my shoulder. So it's not like it's one particular hair product or something doing it. And I, ha I tried to diagnose it, I couldn't figure it out. So I just stepped up my skincare routine, specifically the exfoliants. Um, for an all over exfoliant, I got back into my Pixie Glow Tonic, uh, or these are the Glow To Go peel pads. It's the same formula, I think. As the orange liquid that you just have to dispense onto a cotton pad but I like these because they're super easy to just pull out wipe all over your face and you're good to go and that just ensures that my pores stay nice and clear it eats away at those dead skin cells and just prevents that dead skin and any oil that or sebum that gets trapped in with that doesn't build up to create a breakout then for those active breakouts that I have I have the zit zapper this is from perfectly posh and glycolic acid is the second ingredient in here it just tends to be a really a effective exfoliant for me. So this is what I go to for um, just to like spot, not conceal, spot check, spot treat um, any of those active blemishes that I have. And these two have been, I mean, it's taken some time, like a lot of skincare, but has cleared it up as quickly as I think they could have. So these have just been major saviors in my January, along with the oil that I recently talked about in my five new things that I'm using. In fact, it is this Morgan Miller retinol and vitamin A facial oil. I mentioned in that video that I'm trying to replace some of my Sunday Riley that I, I love all the stuff that I've used from her but it ain't cheap and this is considerably cheaper. It is still a vitamin A facial oil and this is what I like to use at night. Once I'm done exfoliating with these I will place this oil over top and then I'll use that Clarisonic facial massager head to massage it all in. Now because of my skin issues, I have been focused more on a clean but full coverage face. Not a whole lot of emphasis on the eyeshadows. I have been wearing a few here and there, but for the most part I have just been focused on getting a base that covers all of the breakouts I'm trying to conceal and fix and get to go away, while still keeping it looking you know, natural and kind of fresh face. So for that I have been using the Huda Beauty Faux Filter High Coverage Cream Foundation. Mine is in the shade Custard 220N. Probably no surprise. I did mention it in my uh, 2017 foundation favorites video as one that I was so excited to love and discover in 2017. And then I paired that with another product that will be no surprise. It's my Estee Lauder Double Wear Full Coverage Concealer. Nope, Double Wear Waterproof All Day Extreme Wear Concealer. Such a mouthful. And my shade in that is 1C Light. So those have been my full coverage go-tos, but what I have started using more of in January, and this is thanks to the decluttering that I have embarked on <laughs> that is taking me forever, um, I've started getting back into setting powders. And the first powder that did it was rediscovering the Lancome Absolute powders, the one that I like specifically is Absolute Peche, although I do have another one um, that is a little bit, a lot of you guys in, in when I decluttered that asked me what the difference was between the two and I have a whole video reviewing them which I think would be a better reference honestly if you want to go check that out because I haven't used the other ones since rediscovering them I've just gravitated towards Peche because it has a slightly golden hue to it the other one is a little bit more of a pinker undertone and I tend to find that my foundations for the most part it's hard to get like a true neutral undertone foundation they all either skew pink or yellow and so this Huda Beauty for me can go a little bit pink so I tend to stay away from that and I went for the Absolute Peche which is more of a golden yellow undertone here. I have loved this though because it has this slight I say shimmer but I know a ton of people are going to shy away from it because of that it's less of a shimmer and more like this radiance this lit from within sort of glow that I apply it all over it's not like a highlight to the tops of the cheek bones or wherever. It is an all over face setting powder that I like to give my skin just a smooth flawless finish. And then a powder that I totally missed in that decluttering video, which I'm kind of glad I did because I didn't want to get rid of it. Um, this was stuck in another drawer. It's the Fenty Beauty Universal Setting Powder. 
It's the Invisimat blotting powder. Um, and this I use for my under eye area because while I do use the Absolute powder all over, what I found out after kind of focusing it on my inner corner is that it's not the most flattering thing. And it can sometimes, even though the, the makeup is still there over time, it can make it look like it's worn away sooner than it has. I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it doesn't quite wear as well throughout the day in my under eye area quite like it does around the rest of my face. So I have been reaching for the Invisimat from Fenty Beauty um, for my under eye area, just to set that. And what I've come to find, in addition to both of these just giving my face like this gorgeous, flawless finish, especially when it's been a little problematic, but I also forgot what a clean canvas setting powders create for powder products you put over top. I didn't really notice this with my powder products until I started using these, but when you go to apply your powder bronzer blush highlight over top, I just noticed having to work a lot less to get them to blend. I think because there's that powder base there, depending on how your foundation dries, how it might cling to certain spots on your skin, if you have, you know, texture inconsistency, if it's not dried down fully, your bronzer is going to cling in dif differently on certain parts of your face because of that. So I find the powders just create such a level playing field that it made a bronzer, blush, highlight application just goes so much more flawlessly, smoothly, quickly, easily, yada yada, you get it. And it's not really a side effect I would have ever thought of for powder. So just in case if like me, you had forgotten, you know, the joys of setting powder, that is one of them. And these are the ones that I've been loving for January. Speaking of bronzer, this is kind of a weird one because I had a, let me know if this has ever happened to you, but I have been using this product all through the month of January. But as I started to collect my favorites for the month, I realized that this is not really a favorite. As I look through pictures, I'm not totally happy with the way it looks. Every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, that's just not quite right, but we'll go with it. But I've been using it repeatedly because it's just been without, within arm's reach. So I mention it here because I have been using it frequently and I think it's good. It's just not right for me. And so I know I'm gonna be moving on from it. Is that weird? Has anybody else had that happen? Um, this is the Pixie glow and bronze palette. I recently used this in a monochromatic face uh, makeup look that I used. And especially in that one where I was using cool tones on my eyes and lips, this totally stuck out to me as being a little bit more yellow toned. And even if, even if it was because it hadn't matched what I was wearing on the rest of my face, just for my skin tone, it was a little too warm and yellow leaning as a bronzer because, um, in case you probably couldn't see it because I held it up for two seconds, um, but the lightest bronzer in here, you know, compared to the slightly deeper one, it is a little bit warmer and a little bit more yellow, but the next one up is a little too deep for me to wear on a day-to-day -day basis if I didn't want like a super dramatic kind of ultra sculpted contour. So I tend to go for the lighter one, but it's not quite the right shade for me. It's not bad. Like I have been using it because it is of good quality. It blends super easily. It, you know, it's not, it's matte, but it doesn't apply patchy or chalky or dry or anything like that. It just isn't the right shade for me, and so I need to stop being lazy and reaching for what's in front of me and just go back into my makeup collection and find something that works for me. Is that weird? Does anybody else have that problem where they just kind of get in this rut of using what's closest and not going back to like really use what works for them? I don't know. Now last are the lips, and I have kind of a weird story. So like I said, I've been really fresh faced with the skin, minimal eye. I've been loving the overdrawn, natural looking lip. To do that, uh, first I use the lip liner, and the one that I really love is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. It's like the perfect shade of nude with pinky undertones that for me, it's it's one of those lip, my, your lips put better shades, so that I can overdraw my lips without it looking too unnatural or overdone. So I love that. I really do just like overdraw and line my lips. I don't really fill it in. And then I had been going in with Fenty Beauty's Gloss Balm, but the weirdest thing happened, I've been, I've been getting a reaction to it and I kept, I just thought my lips were dry. In fact, I think I mentioned it in my um, 2017 favorites or something to that effect. I mentioned it recently where I couldn't figure out why my lips were constantly peeling and flaking. I thought it was the weird weather, just being dry. And all of a sudden it was like, in fact, Andrew, my husband pointed it out. He's like, you know, every time you use, like you wear that lip combo, your lips kind of peel and flake. And I was like, you know, they do. And they feel kind of tingly and not in a good, not in a good plumping way, but like in a burny tingly, a layer of your lip skin's gonna fall off. That's not a good look or feeling. So I eliminated it from my makeup routine. I still kept using my lip liner and sure enough, that's what was doing it. I'm so bummed. Um, so to substitute in for that, I've been using my Bite Beauty 
always go back to the Bite Beauty um, Agave Lip Mask just to apply over the top, specifically in the center of my lips, but it also helped condition my lips when they were in kind of less than stellar shape. But did anybody have that happen with them with, with the gloss balm or otherwise? I just thought it was the weirdest thing. I've never had a reaction to a product like that. So it's just really weird for me. Let me know. I just have so many questions for everyone in this, in this video. Let me know down in the comments below. And that's it for all of my favorites. So hopefully it was short and sweet. I don't know. As always, I would love to hear your favorites down in the comments below, along with the answers to my questions. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.